Quentin Tarantino is a director never lacking in style, ambition, vision, and of course, violence. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood comes at a very interesting time in his career. Tarantino has always made his plans to retire after his 10th film very public, and this makes Once Upon a Time in Hollywood his penultimate film. Growing up, he dropped out of drama school and started working in his local video archives. Here, he developed a love for old films, especially old foreign films, which greatly influenced his style of filmmaking. He taught himself the art of directing through this process of watching old videos from the archives, eventually premiering his first film, Reservoir Dogs, at Sundance Festival. Throughout all of his nine films, you can see the influence of his love for early cinema in his style, his insistence in shooting on celluloid, and his disenchantment with the digital manipulation of cinema. Today I want to talk about how effectively Tarantino uses a build-up of tension as a narrative tool in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood to crescendo with a sudden, and very violent, release. Welcome to the film essay. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a complex look back at the tumultuous end of the 60s in Hollywood, capturing the film business's rapid modernisation and the end of the hippie movement in the infamous Manson murders. One of the most effective tools Tarantino utilises in this film is a slow and gradual build of tension. He uses a similar technique in a lot of his films, like the opening scene of Inglorious Bastards or the end scene of Django. In both these instances, there are long periods of conversation as the stakes are gradually raised. This leads us to expect a release of tension and makes the eventual fight scenes all the more satisfying. As Kevin Maha writes for The Times, the plot of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a tapestry template that drops in characters like shining beads and watches the story weave slowly around them. The characters introduced have a wide variety of motives, but with some, there is an air of infamy. For example, Charles Manson appears early on in the film, but the story doesn't instantly resolve his presence and lets it ferment. By the end, there are a plethora of characters introduced with varying motives. We wait for the crescendo, expecting it to occur, knowing this radical mix of people introduced through the narrative needs to be resolved. Added to this, there are many scenes where we expect bad things to happen, but the scenes are cut short. As viewers, we want a resolution to the tension, whilst also wanting to see the scenes play out. For example, early on there is a fight scene between Bruce Lee and Cliff Booth. The two size each other up beforehand with aggressive dialogue, building a sense of anticipation in the viewer. We see Bruce take Cliff down first, then Cliff adapt to punish Bruce's overconfidence. Then the two start a proper fight, both adapting to each other's styles before they are interrupted. Another example of this is when Cliff drives Pussycat back to Span Ranch, he suspects the hippies living there, who we later discover are the Manson family, might be taking advantage of George, the ranch owner. This is a long scene. At first he is welcomed by the hippies living there, before noticing the unnerving elements of the group, especially those staring at him. As he goes to investigate the house, a crowd gathers behind him and we expect to see George dead, and a fight to ensue. The tension is released when we find out George is still alive, but rekindled when we see Cliff's car as being punctured by Clem, one of the hippies. As Cliff beats Clem, Tex is summoned by one of the girls. The camera follows the girl on the horse as she rides out to tell Tex. The camera then follows Tex as he rides back, the music growing in intensity and the camera shaking in anticipation. This builds and we expect a crescendo before it is revealed that Cliff has already left. This is what makes the ending so satisfying. We've wanted to see Cliff's stunt work throughout the film, and many times we've expected tension to be released or characters to clash. Throughout the film there have been ominous cars in the background, or shots that make it look like people are being followed. We've been waiting for something to happen, some climax to the story. This is given to us all in a five minute, intense and gory fight scene, a sudden and explosive release that satisfies all we've come to expect from a Tarantino film. Essentially, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is an expansion of the end of Django or the opening scene of Inglorious Bastards, a narrative that grows in tension through character introduction and clever dialogue, building the pressure and the viewer's expectation, and leading to an ending that can only be described as a catharsis.
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more content.